Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video we're going to do just a little bit of fabrication. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what a welder's third hand is and I've on several occasions recently I've needed something like that. So we're going to spend a little time today uh, working with a piece of steel and trying to make a uh, hopefully making a welder's uh, third hand out of it. What I've got <clears throat> Excuse me. What I've got is this piece of uh, mystery metal here, tapered at a point here. This thing was originally probably 30 inches long, had a T on the end of it, like it was made for a some kind of a stake. But looking at the end, I don't believe it was ever driven in the ground. I do know it's very very hard material. Uh, as a matter of fact. I did some work with this, with some of this material uh, some time back, and it was so hard to work with, I just put it away. But recently, I, I cut a piece off of it. The saw will cut it. Uh, cut a piece off of it and put it in my forge. And I brought it to a cherry red heat and then just let it cool off in the forge and let the forge, uh, let it, let it set right there in the forge and everything cool for, I probably let it set overnight, 12, 24 hours, just let it cool on its own. And then this piece is very workable. Uh, I was able to turn it on the lathe with no problems. Uh, uh, the way it acted, I know very little about steel types, but the way it acted uh, being just a little bit gummy made me think that it's possibly 4140. But in any case, the rest of this is going to be usable, but with this taper on the end down here, uh, the only real use I could see out of it was maybe turning it down to make a smaller diameter. And then it hit me that maybe this piece would be ideal for the welder's third hand. So I'm going to carry this over to the saw. Uh, it's got a little flat on this side to probably cut it off to along here uh, at this point on the saw then put this piece in the forge and get it red hot so that we can drill it uh, to put our legs on for the welder's third hand. Okay, the piece is cooling off good out there in the kiln now, but it's going to take at least 12 hours uh, to cool down for the kiln, uh, for the forge to cool down and the workpiece to cool down. It's probably going to get 48 hours as this is Saturday morning, and I won't get back out here to that piece until uh, probably Monday morning. But in the meantime, I've got this other piece laid here on the workbench just to use it as, as an example and show you what I plan to do for this. Being the pragmatic one, I've got to do things a little bit different uh, and maybe even, some would say, maybe even compl uh, complicate things some. But what I'm going to do is take this piece of 5 8 round stock and drill through our workpiece that's cooling out there. Well, this will go through it. This will be cut to length to give about a half inch on each side. Then I'm going to take two of these bolts Six, uh, quarter to 20 bolts. What I'll do ahead of time is cut the head off, put a point on these, and probably bend about a 30 degree angle uh, for the last, well, whatever the taper is on here for the point, and maybe uh, come back a quarter inch or half inch beyond that taper, and like I say, put about a 30 degree bend. 
this rod that we make here too will also be in that half inch that sticks out each side will be drilled and tapped for the quarter 20. So there'll be two of these on each side that eventually the uh, as I say will have a point on the end and turn down. This through the center of a workpiece I'll have a uh, locking bolt on the back that I can adjust this angle to whatever uh, angle I need for the workpiece. Uh, I'm doing that instead of welding these on just simply because I'm not sure what the best angle will be. This is the first third hand I've ever made so uh, uh, like I say I'm, I got the equipment, I'm pragmatic, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Finally another one of these six inch quarter twenty rods I'll take a take the head off of it again turn the uh, turn a point on the end of it and probably put a 90 degree bend in it and then this end will be threaded for the quarter 20 and that will go into that end and that will give me an adjustable third hand and get this weight up high so I'm going to start probably on the lathe first uh, taking these uh, well I'll go to the bandsaw and take the heads off Alright, I did one of these off camera, but I got the uh, the three legs, got the head cut off. And I think, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to turn to the lathe and uh, turn the taper on the end of these on the lathe. Alright, I got the compound set at a 10 degree angle and got it slid back on the cross slide uh, to where I can work on the back side of the workpiece. Now that 10 degrees will give me about a uh, a taper about three quarters of an inch long on here. So. Of course, I want to start with my with my compound backed out, and I'm actually locking down the carriage position. And all we'll be doing is the compound. Remember, I've got the lathe in reverse now because I'm cutting on the back side. And I'm taking very small cuts just simply because I got so much sticking out here. say that gave me about a gives me about a three quarter inch taper all right I'm going to do the other two and then we'll go on to the next step I think I might have said this was a piece of 5 8 stock exactly actually three quarters which is fine the work piece that this will go through is about a uh, two inch before the rust on it but let's face off the ends face off one end and then we'll face the other to get it to length and again I think I misspoke and said that our workpiece that's actually cooling out there in the forge now was two inch it's inch uh, 1.75 so we want to make this 2.75 or roughly I just scribe a little mark on there to the face two I cut it about a looks like about a hundred thousandths long mark on here first our desired length ok 
Okay, now we're ready to turn around to the uh, mill and put us a quarter twenty tapped hole, a quarter inch from each end. Got the workpiece set on a couple of parallels over in the mill vise now. And what I want to do is find the center on the Y axis first. So we'll, we'll just do that against the vise jaws. Y one half. All right. Now what we want to do is find one end. All right, this probe is a hundred thousandths, uh, two hundred thousandths wide. So we want to move in half of that, which of course is 100. And then we'll re-zero out the x-axis. And that has us now the x-axis at exactly uh, the same edge, zeroed on the edge. So we'll put a spotting drill in. Chuck it up pretty close. Now we're going to move in 250 thousandths. Now we'll use our tap drill for a quarter twenty. And a little rapid tap. Well, actually I'm going to use a, excuse the lean over, use a little cutting fluid to get it drilled. I expect this will take a couple backup and restarts, but should be able to power tap this. Now we'll go to rapid tap. Again, I'm just allowing the tap to pull itself in. Giving it just a little pressure now to kind of, oh. Well, guess what I did? Well, yes, I did break that tap off. I uh, got, got in too big of a hurry. But instead of spending an hour or ever how long it would have took to get this tap out, even if I could get it out with what I got, I just started over again. I'm sure at some point in time, uh, remember this was two and three quarter inch. I'm sure at some point in time I'll need a two and a half inch, two and a half inch piece of uh, three quarter inch stock. So this is just going to go in my uh, oops bin. But I got another piece, uh, got another piece of three quarter stock, uh, faced the ends, drilled and tapped for the quarter twenty. This was all done on Saturday morning, and it's now Monday morning, uh, ready to start a new week. I've got the piece out. Of course, it cooled long before Monday morning, but uh, it's got a pretty hard forge scale on it now. I'm going to carry this over to the wire wheel, clean this forge scale off, and then we're going to put this in the lathe, face off the end, flatten I look at that, I'm not sure after I clean the scale off whether I even need to flatten that or not. But I'll meet you back over in the lathe in just a moment. All right, I got a lot of forge scale knocked off of it. Looks a whole lot better, but I think I can get a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to try to turn this down, try to find that angle and turn it on the, uh, on the lathe. Remember what this is being used for. But I am going to see if I can uh, use my uh, pipe sander, pipe grinder, and knock a little more of that scale off. I've got the lathe in reverse now. Got some uh, shop rags down here to keep from uh, this dust getting on the ways.
That's working, but I believe I need, need a new belt. Yeah, that's, that's getting it plenty fine for this application. Okay, enough trying to put lipstick on the pig. Let's get this up here a little closer. We're going to face off this end. And that should give us an indication of how much uh, putting, the, how much that time in the kiln or in the uh, forge helped out because having worked with this metal before this particular piece of metal, I can tell you it would it would be throwing sparks from one side to the other uh, in its pre-forged stage. Yeah, that is a whole lot softer. Now I'm going to turn the piece around. And drill and tap this end down here for a quarter twenty. All right, while I'm right here, I think I'm going to face off the very end down here enough so that a, a quarter inch nut uh, will lay flat. That'll be a locking nut. And I'm going to try not to get too over aggressive with the with the tap this time because I don't have another piece of this. Well, not another tapered piece. All right, I think that started in there good now. I'm gonna take this out, carry it over to the vise be a little easier to be sure I'm holding this straight. Then what we're going to do is go back over to the mill and drill our hole for the for the through piece. Okay, I got a nice quarter twenty hole drilled and tapped in this end. What I want to do now is drill this three quarter inch hole through here that this will this will go into. Now I want this perpendicular to this flat surface on here. Uh, again, I got no idea what this piece of metal originally was used for. I called it a tent stake a while ago, but I just really have no idea uh, and don't know what the purpose of that flat was. But I want this perpendicular to that flat. All right, I found this edge. Now I need to do just a little bit of math to see how far I want to set this over. All 
All right, our through piece is three quarters of an inch. So I want to go half that, of course, which is three eighths. And then I want to leave a quarter inch of material at the end. So total we need to step over five eighths, which is 0.625. And lock down the X axis at that point. And I'm gonna step drill this in about three or four different steps. Okay, I think with a little bit of persuasion that'll go through. I will pass the drill bit through it another time or two. All right, now what we want to do is turn it back on its side. got the workpiece turned in the vise now with the flat surface up and what I'm going to do is drill and tap that for 5 16 18 thumb screw That's the way I like to see the power tapping work. All right, what I'm going to do next is go back out there to the forge and put about a 30 degree bend on two of these, which will be the two that goes in this end. And I put a 90 degree, about a 90 degree bend in the point end one. I'm not going to carry the camera out there. It's raining pretty hard outside right now. and wind blowing so I'd rather not get the camera out in that uh, environment but uh, it's just going to be simply a matter of heating these up first off to burn this uh, zinc or galvanized whatever plating is on there burn that off and then put the bend in all right uh, turns out this cross piece was uh, just too tight uh, in our uh, weight so I carried this over to the lathe and took about ten thousandths off of the diameter so that it fits in there fine. And I decided at the same time I would uh, turn a little groove in this right in the center. And what that's going to be for when this goes in, that will line up in the middle. And I'm going to put a little steel ball drop a little steel ball down in there. That will keep this lined up. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You'll be able to loosen it and do your adjustment without it trying to slide to one side to the other. On the thumb screw, I went ahead and, and cut about 3 eighths of an inch off the length of it. And what I'm going to do now in the, in the mill is try to hold that in as well as I can see it and take this ball end mill, I'm going to line that up on center by eye, and just put a little indention in here for that uh, steel ball to ride in.
Don't need a whole lot there. Okay. Now I think we're ready to go back over to the uh, workbench and start reassembling all this. Okay, I think we're ready to assemble everything. Uh, the two back legs that I've been at a, approximately a 30 degree angle. Uh, I've got the lock nuts on them. So we'll insert our piece and looking down in there I'm dropping a little steel ball in. Alright, now we can loosen that and rotate our piece without losing center. We'll thread these on and turn that out just a little. May have to put this in the vise later to get the two lined up just like I want it. That's fairly close. Now we can adjust the height on these with the thumb screw. Now we'll put our front point in. I suspect these will get some, once I get them lined up, or when I go carry it over to the vise to line it up, we'll get some uh, Loctite on the threads as well. Because once these are set, they shouldn't have to be changed. The only place we'll pivot is right here. And here's how this will work. Over on the workbench or over on the welding bench, got two pieces I need to weld together and just need something to help hold it. That's all this third hand is about, is holding a couple pieces in place while you weld them. I know some of you are thinking right on, that is the most overcomplicated uh, welder's third hand you've ever seen. And it probably is, but I enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed watching the build. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.